What's up, hungry people? Today, we are heading out of the kitchen and into Stardew Valley for some of the most relaxing simulated home cooking around. Stardew Valley is one of those games that's just so addicting that I've bought it like three or four times across several different devices. And if you can't tell from my saved files, I've invested one or two hours into playing the game. I've been attempting a completionist challenge up on this first file and because it's almost summer here at home and this save file is pretty early on in the summertime, we'll just hop into one of my favorite farms and see what we have to cook. As you can see, I have a pretty nice house. Oh, and here is my lovely husband, Sam. That smells, apparently. Why are you in the kitchen? Please get out of the kitchen. You're also in front of my oven. I need to see what I can cook. Okay, so in my completionist challenge, basically I've been trying to collect all of the recipes. Of course, I'm still missing a couple here or there. I do have enough ingredients on hand to make Sam's favorite. That's why he's my husband. But I'm kind of interested to see what other things are in my inventory that I might actually be able to cook in real life. Ooh, a lucky lunch. Ooh, I don't know if I can get sea cucumber anywhere though. Might be kind of hard. Hmm. Fried mushrooms. Ooh, morels are in season. I wonder if I can find those someplace. Salad. Cheese cauli? Oh, just cheese cauliflower. I think it's missing or it's abbreviated or something. Baked fish. What else we got? Crab cakes, cranberry candy, bruschetta, that'd be kind of fun. Coleslaw. Ooh, fiddlehead risotto. I did just see fiddlehead ferns at my local grocery store. And I think I might be able to get all these ingredients. Obviously, I don't have them on hand right now, but let's, let's go on a little adventure and see if I can't find some of these ingredients. I know you can find the fiddlehead fern in the secret woods in the summertime. So because it's the summer, let's just trek across. Actually, let's hop on our horse here. Make it a little faster. Let's go. Get out of my way. As you can see, I've invested a lot of time. Oh, what? Oh, what? Oh, what? As you can, uh, as you can see, I've invested a lot of time on this farm. I've spent many, many, many hours planting and harvesting and making money. So let's all go ahead and back. And back to the secret woods. Oh, of course there'd be wood in the way. I'm using a different keyboard, so I'm not quite as smooth. Hopefully there's a fiddlehead fern back in these secret woods. Let's see. Oh, yes, perfect. Right here, waiting for us. So go ahead and grab that, pop it into our inventory. Ignore all these slime monsters. So then what, was, what else did we need? We needed to get oil. Um, I don't want to press oil, but I'm pretty sure I can pick some up at Pierre's. Uh, let's go over there and see if he has any oil for sale. Ooh, drink a coffee, then my horse will go faster. I hate on PC how you have to do this manually. Here we go. Drink. And please drink that. No, drink, drink, drink the coffee. God damn it. Damn it. Drink the coffee? Yes. Thank you. Will you expect me to function without coffee in this game? Come on. And let's pop on into Pierre's. Oh, what? Ah, come on. I'm just gonna wait here like a creeper. Gosh, finally. I feel like one of those customers who's always banging on the grocery store doors. Technically before opening hours. I should know better. Let's see. We needed oil. There it is. And then what else did we need? Oh, a head of garlic. I don't think he has garlic. But... As one of my best farms, I'm pretty certain I'll have garlic somewhere in my storage. Back off to the farm. Okay, so I have all these chests, and I'm one of those people who like organizes by season, so I think it's one of these. Nope, it's summer, spring, yes, garlic. So go ahead and grab one of these, and then I'll run back to the kitchen, see if we can't cook up this fiddlehead risotto. 
spaghetti? No. All right. Oh, yes. Fiddlehead risotto requires oil, fiddlehead fern, and garlic. A creamy rice dish served with sautéed fern heads. It's a little bland. Ah, what? Oh, well, we'll make it anyway. Let's go ahead and grab that. Man, that was so much easier in the game, but I'm sure it'll be in real life. And I think we can just serve this up for later. And that's how you make that old head risotto. And if I eat it, oops, eat fiddlehead risotto. Yes, yum, yum. Now to go back to sleep and try this recipe in real life. Welcome back to the Starving Chef's Kitchen in real life. To get started, we'll need to melt down our butter until it is frothy and just starting to brown. I originally wanted to make this recipe as close as I could to the recipe in Stardew Valley, and of course when I went to make it, I instinctively used butter instead of oil right off the bat. So, we're just going to pretend that this butter is oil because this is real life and I like butter better. Next, add the fiddlehead ferns to the skillet. Fiddleheads can actually be toxic if eaten raw, so I recommend boiling and blanching the fiddleheads for about 10 to 15 minutes to be on the safe side. Fiddleheads sort of remind me of a cross between asparagus and okra, or maybe spinach and mushrooms. Texture-wise, they are closer to asparagus with their snap and crunch, but they have a more earthy flavor that gives off hints of nuttiness. It's definitely one of the more unique flavors I've tried. Next, we'll add some minced garlic and saute everything together until the garlic is nice and fragrant. Give the skillet a generous seasoning of sea salt and cracked pepper, and then continue to saute until the fiddleheads are tender. Remember to season the dish as you go. We definitely do not want our risotto to be bland, which is apparently how it is in Sturdy Valley. Move over, queen of sauce. There's a new cook in town. Remove the fiddleheads and as much of the garlic as you can from the skillet. Leave behind a tiny bit of the butter oil in order to start browning the rice. For this recipe, we'll be using arborio rice, which is usually what risotto is made from. The game, for some reason, doesn't recognize rice as one of the ingredients in risotto, which is literally the main ingredient in risotto. So I'm really starting not to trust that the queen of sauce actually knows how to cook anything. Stir the rice until it is beginning to brown and pop in the skillet. Next, pour in the beef broth about a quarter cup at a time. The goal here is to have the rice absorb all of the liquids before adding another quarter cup of the broth. Risotto can be a relatively time consuming process if done correctly. I'm using an electric skillet that's apparently smaller than my skillet surface area, so the skillet gets the best heat directly in the middle. I'll need to stir mine a bit more to make the rice cook evenly. You'll know when it's time to add more broth when the liquid is no longer forming bubbles and the rice is starting to stick to the bottom of the skillet. Basically, risotto is just simmering the rice, stirring occasionally, adding more broth, stirring more occasionally until the broth is absorbed and then repeat ad nauseum. You can sort of see the dry spots here with just a tiny bit of liquid remaining in the skillet. All in all, you'll be adding about four cups, a quarter cup at a time, until the rice is cooked all the way through. You'll know you are starting to get close to being done when the rice starts to more or less reject the additions of broth and starts to thicken to form a sauce. Give it one more crack of salt and pepper to taste. One of the most important elements in risotto is cheese. A more traditional risotto will use Parmesan cheese, but for this recipe, we're going to be using iridium grade cheese called Gruyere. Finally, return the salted fiddleheads to the skillet and fold them into the rice so they get nice and coated in the cheesy sauce. I had no idea that fiddlehead ferns existed in real life until I randomly saw them at my grocery store because other than Stardew Valley, I had never heard of such a thing. They were kind of expensive, about nine or 10 bucks per pound, but of course I had to satiate my own curiosity and buy them for this recipe. I went back into the game and added up all my playtimes between my PC and mobile versions and I've played well over 300 hours of Stardew Valley. 
the fact that I'm not sick of it yet should give you some indication on how much I love this game. Making this recipe from Stardew Valley was a ton of fun, especially playing out the recipe in the game as well as in real life. If this is something you guys enjoyed and would like to see more of, let me know which recipes from Stardew Valley you would like to see me make next. I've also put about 1200 hours into similar games like The Sims and City Skylines, so I'd love some ideas on other games I should play and the recipes you want me to bring to life. I'd also love some suggestions for food that you guys have seen in movies or TV shows that you would also like to see me make. Leave a comment down below. If you want to help support my channel, feel free to check out the Teespring link in the description where you can find some of my Starving Chef merch. When you buy my merch, you are helping to support a small creator with ingredient costs, camera upgrades, and more. Every little bit of your support helps. Don't forget to flip that sub button and ring the dinner bell to be notified of my latest recipes and foodie adventures that I post every week. As always, you can find this recipe and many others with step-by-step -step instructions on the starvingchefblog.com. I hope you all enjoyed, and don't shop at Jojo Mart.